There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With over 140 channels in your vehicle, your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM Video On Demand. What you love is on now. What's going on, guys? Welcome to CMA Connected, presented by Sirius XM on this Monday, beginning of the week. And uh, for American friends who may be tuning in, happy Memorial Day. Hopefully you guys are having a great long weekend. All right. So on today's episode, we're going to dive deep on a brand that uh, we recently announced during Industry Week is back in Canada. That's right. They are now available once again up here. Um, they've had a rich history. Of course, they've been in Canada before. And then um, not sure what happened. Doesn't really matter. What's important is that they're back and they're back courtesy of our friends at Auto Mobility. So we're talking, of course, about Memphis Car Audio. And to celebrate today's episode, I went out of my way to dig into my collection and bust out my Tennessee Starbucks mug. That's right, Tennessee, because that's where Memphis is. And um, yeah, I thought that how many people got a Memphis cup in Canada? Seriously, right? Or a Tennessee cup, anyhow. Um, let's go ahead and bring on our uh, very important guest representing automobility. It's our good friend, Steve Coulomb. What's going on, Steve? Hi, Ben. Doing good, you? How goes the status of affairs in Montreal? It's very busy at this time. It's uh, the, the big season, the heavy season for us, so. I know you've uh, been super busy, man. I like, I could, I, I like, everybody's been rocking, as you know, but I yeah. think uh, you guys are having a phenomenal year, so congratulations on that. We are trying to stay on top of, uh, of the game, yes. Well, staying on top of the game is what it's all about because a, lot, a couple of weeks ago we had you on, right? And we, I, I just mentioned that we announced that Automobility is partnering up with Memphis for, for Canada. And how's that been going? Very good. As of now, uh, most of the inventory already landed uh, a month and a half ago. So uh, pretty uh, excited customers and dealers uh, have been uh, reaching out uh, to us to uh, bring that line back. So uh, even new customers. Uh, so very exciting. You know, that's a brand, Steve. You and I go way back, back into the days of the car shows and everything. And remember, Memphis was quite a force back in the day. So I know for sure that there is a, a loyal following already to begin with. And have you felt that when, when you, after you announced it, that you got people reaching out to you about that? Yes. Um, of course, the history of the brand, it's one of the oldest brands, uh, U.S. brands, base brands. So uh, listen, the, the lineup that they have and that that they offer right now is is quite phenomenal. You know, it, it fills up fills up a lot of holes that uh, needs to be addressed in the industry right now. So, and, and what company. great what what great timing, Steve? Because they recently really refreshed a lot of the look and the feel and the design, right? And I think you just nailed the timing on the head. Of course, I mean uh, we we had a need at Automob. I mean we we needed to fill a hole with uh, you know very specific product. As you can see on screen, the sound bars. Uh, th this, especially this year, uh, since last year, a lot of power sport, uh, demand, specific products, uh, sound bars, Harley kits, mean it, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. everyone want to, uh, you know, equip their uh, their hobbies because no travel okay. is allowed. So. Yeah. yeah, and you know, if COVID's done anything, it's gotten people to play. That's for sure. All different types of vehicles, and we've covered it all. And I think Memphis got a really nice offering um, for all those categories. But hey, yep. who am I to say that when we have behind in the studio the man himself from Memphis Audio who's joining us today? Why don't you introduce him for us, Steve? Let's welcome uh, Nick Lomonaco. Uh, he's the president of Memphis USA. So uh, we're glad to have him on board today on that Memorial Day in the U.S., so... Because we got the president it. to work on Memorial Day. I feel terrible. But, hey, Canadians need to know. So he's got to suck it up. Right, Nick? That, that's, that's, that's right. <laughs> uh, well, happy Memorial Day, and thank you for taking uh, this hour of your day to uh, to join us today. No problem. No problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, uh, we're we're excited to be on board with Automob, and so it is not a big deal for me to to, to work on a holiday to help... To help uh, educate some of your guys well our guys are our canadian hardcore audio enthusiasts and mobile audio enthusiasts and uh 
you know, you, you're, you're bringing to the table with automobility a lineup that's very interesting because it covers a lot of gambits in the spectrum of all things mobile audio, whether it be power sports or Harley or traditional, you know, car audio. And I mentioned on the top of the, uh, of the show that there's been a certain refresh of the brand, not only in look and feel, but also in the design of some of the products. Uh, so I wanted you to touch on that. But, you know, for those of you know, dealers are tuning in who maybe, maybe be hearing about Memphis for the very first time. Why don't you start by sharing with us a little bit of Memphis Audio's rich history? Okay, yeah, uh, we're we're the oldest American brand that I know of that's still making it, just, just making amps up speakers. Uh, we started in 1919, so we just celebrated 102 years in aftermarket auto. So we started in 1919 making uh, seat covers, floor mats for Model Ts, so um, Arthur Fulmer the first, our CEO's grandfather, uh, had a library. So in Memphis, people would bring their horses in to do business in Memphis, and he'd shoe them and feed them, all that stuff. And then he started realizing cars were more bigger deal than horses. So he started uh, doing that with cars. And, and uh, so we've made basically every accessory you can ever think of. Um, that picture there showed we we're the first distributor for Duco refreshing, which turned into DuPont. Um, so we, we are paint distributor, pretty much everything in the aftermarket auto world. And then 65, we started making radios, changed to Fultron, eventually Memphis. So we've been we've been in the auto audio game since 65 and the auto game since 19. So uh, yeah, I would say that's some history. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? But so so fast forward a little bit to and I don't know the timing of this, but I felt it when all of a sudden st things started kind of looking different at Memphis Audio, the design, the look, the feel, the rebranding of it all. Uh, when did that take place and what was the initiative behind that? Um, well, that started right about uh, 2016 CES uh, was when their four first big changes came into, came into play. Um, you know, uh, I brought, uh, that's when I got promoted to VP of Memphis at the time and I brought on actually my best friend uh, that uh, since we were 15 years old, we we're college roommates as our marketing manager. And uh, so that's where the, the sexy, sexy stuff came in where we relaunched the complete look. And then I brought in a really good friend to head up engineering, Brad Diedrich, and he's really ramped up the engineering since then to some, you know, bringing us some patents, some stuff that other people aren't doing. So it really just took us to the next level as far as looks and function. Yeah, I mean, if anybody goes to the website, Memphis Car Audio, you're going to see the whole lineup, and we're going to touch on a couple of these key items today. But, Steve, before we talk about the items, you know, you obviously recognize Memphis had this going on, right? They were changing up some stuff. I mean, the look, the feel, uh, a couple of the key products. Like, you, I, I know you have that power bar. We're going to be talking about that. But, like, you know, when I saw that first Mojo Mini, like, I knew, well, what's happening over here at, Mo at Memphis? Like, they're changing things. I just wanted to hear what your perspective was on before you signed them up. Well, innovation, uh, very unique products. Uh, listen, I mean, they know where to stand. Uh, I mean, as, as far as a the company, they, they offer, you know, multiple uh, solutions for uh, every part of this, in this industry right now. So, I mean, this would catch my eye pretty much. And, you know, after the first meeting with Nick, uh, listen, it was pretty much in my mind a done deal with them. Uh, very straightforward, uh, you know, so it's, it's a very unique company and uh, glad to work with them. Nick's kind of an easygoing guy, I have to admit. Just like me, so it was a good well, fit. No, no, not you. You're very good. <laughs> but Nick is very easygoing. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, no, I think you guys are going to make a great team. So let's give the people yeah. what they want. Let's dive into some products and, and get people excited about what Memphis Car or Memphis Audio is bringing to the table. Um, where would you like to start, <clears throat> Nick? Um, well, I'll, first I'd like to talk about one of our coolest products. It's our MXA MCAPP. It's our uh, app radio. Um, this is a super cool piece. We launched it a couple of years ago. Um, it's an IPX uh, 66 black box radio. It's got a wired remote with all your key uh, controls, play, pause, forward, back, and volume. Um, but the super cool factor of this one is that um, it, you can use it anywhere. So it was originally designed for power sports and marine, but when we launched it at SEMA, the amount of... Uh, feedback we got for classic cars or custom cars where you don't have any, you don't, you don't want to show a radio All you, you can, it's a full feature radio front rear sub and all the other features are controlled on the app. So you, uh, you can fade balance. It's got a seven band, completely customizable EQ in Hold addition up. to hand up before you continue. I'm sorry. The, you said this is a source unit, a source unit. Yes. Where, where's the interface? 
The interface is that there's a remote right there. Um, okay. That your basic controls that fits in a two inch knockout. Uh, okay, I got it now. Gotcha. And and then there, or you can completely control it via app on your phone. So everything is the the complete controls are so volume forward back play pause still available on the app as well. Um, those are just hard buttons there for for those that want to use those. So all the other uh, intricate controls like fade balance EQ. Uh, setting your presets for FMA or weather band. That's all done via the app, but you can still change everything with, the, with that remote. Um, in addition, it also has RGB output. So there's a million, million color RGB and you can connect a bunch of RGBs to it um, and control the color via the app. What type of inputs for audio? Uh, we have Bluetooth, auxiliary, um, and then AM, FM, weather band. All right. So not only is it a faceless source unit, um, app controlled, uh, but no amplification. Oh, and yes, four by fifty built in. So four by fifty built in on top of that, and obviously yeah. pre outs too for, for yes, uh, front, amplifiers, front rear and sub as well. Yes. Yeah. All so right. it's a uh, it's been a very popular piece, and it's just kind of the go to for it works for everything. I mean, it's the, that's the brain for our uh, power sports kits. That's the brain for the, the big sound bar we're going to talk about next. Um, and, you know, we've a ton of installs. We've had some SEMA vehicles that are going to have that as their source unit because they don't want to mess with, they just left the factory to light up and do nothing with it. Uh, you know, you're saying that I'm thinking about like classic car builds, hot rod builds, muscle car builds that actually you don't even, you can still, um, you know, upgrade your sound system but not have to deface what the da original dash looks like. Cause not everybody's into changing how the original one looks like, right? No, no. And you're actually going to get a better head unit there. There are, there are some options to put stuff in, but I mean, they're so, this is, this is a state of the art, like today head unit. Um, not one that will retrofit in there. Right. You, know, you just hide this and you get, you get a real head unit that you can easily control and get. And even for the guys that, you know, I have a lot of customers where, Maybe the guys at Classic Cars, they're not too phone savvy. Well, mm -hmm. you can you can set everything up and then they can just work their presets on their on the on the remote. So it's yeah. it's it's used and for still everything. find somewhere to put that button if they actually want that hard. Yeah. Now yeah. you don't have to put that the, nope. the remote. Right. Okay. Nope. Nope. Hundred percent hundred percent you can use the app. There's so many applications I'm thinking about this. I didn't even know this existed until right now. So I mean for like power sports, golf carts, boats, uh, there's just so many applications for this. Yep. Yep. That's, and that's every, every day we hear, uh, actually I have a customer, a customer in, uh, in Pacific Northwest US. He, uh, he puts it on, on barbecues because there he's got, there's, <laughs> there's a, yeah. So I forget the brand of barbecue he has, but he, custom, he puts that, he puts that on the barbecues because then he can run four speakers bolted onto the barbecue. It's got a 12 volt, um, 12 volt inverter on that barbecue. So you plug into the wall. And that runs barbecues. So Nick, you need to plug in that brand right now. I I, I want one barbecue. Yeah. Right <laughs> Can you imagine? That is crazy. Uh, Steve, I like your input on this. I mean, obviously, I know that you, you're pretty excited about this piece because I don't know of any other piece like this. So what's the feedback being on this one? Uh, right now, it's very good. Uh, like, like Nick said, I mean, this, <laughs> you can even put this piece on a barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think that's all. I don't know what to say. Can be. I mean, you <laughs> yeah. can put that on everything. You know what I'm even thinking in, in my toolbox at home. I can right, run like it's it's basically instant source unit anywhere. Correct. Anyway, yeah, yeah, and, and it's versatile as well. So it's not it, even though it's it's a special application uh, head uh, source unit. It's still it has its full feature. You know, it's got three sets of pre outs. It's got auxiliary Bluetooth EQ. Same same wiring for any metric kit or anything like that. Um, that I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I would imagine though, because it's uh, basically I, the back of the radio. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I had to throw it out there, it's the same as as uh, as like a, a kicker radio. It's the yeah. same as yeah. Uh, yeah. a couple other brands of radios. So very cool. All right, yeah. very nice. Um, well, that technology, um, that basic that that same brain, we use in our uh, MXA four six SB twenty eight that uh, Steve has sitting on the counter there. So uh, this is uh, an overhead sound bar for power sports. It's designed to be bolted on the roll cage and be right above your head. It's got four six and a halfs, four tweeters. It is super loud if you see it sitting there with the LEDs scrolling through. So uh, this was the, other people have done it now, but this was the first 
that I know of speakers that uh, that light up via the pole piece where the LEDs are behind the speaker, which are uh, it's a pretty cool look to light up those four six and a halfs in a in a very shallow enclosure. Um, as I said, it's got the app radio built in, so you've got all the all the features with the EQ, the sources being auxiliary, uh, Bluetooth, AM, FM, and weather band. And even though you set your AM, FM, weather band channels via the app, there's an external antenna, so it's not a you're not getting your FM is over the air. It's not over over your um, the phone network. Um, I mean, that looks like a really big piece. Uh, that looks really loud, and that's what we want. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what about um, brackets or that type of the hardware that comes with for, for install? Um, so it's an inch and a half to two and a quarter bra uh, bars it'll fit on. And on the top side, the bottom side, and two rails in the back for that sound bar, there's multiple mounting options. So one of my good friends, he's got a Yamaha uh, YXE. He mounts it behind the seats. Um, another friend has... Um, a ranger he mounted above a uh, ranger or razor i don't even remember now above above the roll feed so it's really designed to go right here above your head mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the brackets uh it comes with two two brackets i said go to one inch and a half to two and a quarter um very versatile on the mounting so, and 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 the other question i have now um can i build my system based on Having, let's say I start with the sound bar. Can I then have does your outputs to expand? Yes, yes, it's got it's got outputs to expand with the EQ built in to expand as well. Um, so this could be your source unit, and we we do have a lot of people that start with this, and then they add. A, now that we have vehicle specific subs, they add a sub. They add some rear rear speakers on the uh, on the cage with a small amp or something. Um, yeah, so it it's a full source unit as well. It's basically the app radio that we mentioned built into this. this uh, okay, okay, camera. okay, I get it. Because the feedback we've had from a lot of shops is, you know, when, when people come in with a side by side or they want to start getting into it, a great place to start is that sound bar, right? They're going to yeah. get immediate improvement on their sound, obviously. Um, it's quote unquote easier to install. There's no fab to do. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like it has the right hardware. It's going to give them a, the volume that they want because that's kind of important when you're running through the woods or the dunes or wherever you are. Um, but most important is you can tell the customer that, hey, it doesn't have to stop here. If you like that and you want to grow with it, we can do that. Yeah, it's, it's a good starting point without being a, uh, uh, I, I started it now, I got to throw this piece out. It's loud. It'll be a good starting point. You're going to want to be there. You're going to keep that the entire time. Just keep adding on and getting louder. Mm -hmm. So. It's it's an awesome it's an awesome piece. Very very cool. And uh, obviously for Steve for Automar for you guys that's finally you got something in the category of of soundbar. Yeah, and uh, let me tell you, I hooked this one up last Friday, and this thing is loud as hell. I mean, it's uh, four six six and a half. So, yeah, it I mean, looks just, beefy. Just it looks really big. Three hundred watts. And, just saying. Yeah. And because it's, most it's, of the soundbars I've seen are thin, and they're running like threes and fours. The, the, I'm not sure if I've seen a whole lot with four six and a halfs. No, that well, we we have those as well. We have a twenty inch and a thirty five inch soundbar as well. Um, uh, but that one is it's really shallow. It's a couple inches deep, so it you know it's it's wide this way, but it, when it goes flat, it's not very big, depth wise. So we uh we have a full soundbar lineup. We have um, I think we have the first the first the first twenty inch soundbar that's got FM built into it, and in addition to the thirty five inch soundbar, and then we have a new nine inch soundbar that's designed for anything from personal watercraft to, to side by oh. side. So, so yeah, we have so a, Memphis is pretty serious about soundbars. Yeah, we're very serious about soundbars. Um, very um, very cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, soundbar check, radio check. What about because I mean Steve mentioned bikes. Because that, like, you know, we had a CMA live episode recently. Bike was like the biggest episode of it. It's obviously a very fast growing segment. What does Memphis have when it comes to bikes? Well, um, we just launched the um, end of last year our uh, direct fit Harley kits. So I mentioned earlier one of my good friends um, that I that I hired as our head of engineering. Uh, he's he's done some work in the past with uh, with Harley Davidson. So. What we have is our direct fit kits for road guide, road guide and street glide. And if you look at the speaker there, um, a lot of things that we did were based on the OE spec. So that's uh, it's a plastic basket, neo magnet. So there's a, there's no OEM spec for how much weight you can put in the handlebars and on the fairing. And ours fits within that. And that was the that was the that was the OE stuff. But then when it came to the sound, what we wanted to do is we listened to our customers. 
Uh, we do a lot of, we listen to our customers a lot. When we go to a new product, we go ask our customers, what do your customers want? What do you want? Um, and so our goal was to make an easy installation with the sound that they wanted. So these speakers have a pro audio sound um, while being, of course, water, water resistant. The front half of them is IPX6, so they, they can get wet and, and be fine. Uh, but we spent a lot of time tuning these with a lot of guys that were very anal about their sound. Um, so uh, we, our speakers are designed to be heard when a Harley's a Harley pipes are, are running or when you're at 60 miles an hour on the road. We, we, we want to be able to hear these speakers. So that's what they're designed to do. This is not a car speaker that we fab to fit in a fairing. This is a pro audio style motorcycle speaker that we designed to be heard. Um, uh, so, so what I see here, Nick, so obviously we got the coaxial, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm perfect fit. So those are the exact mounting screw holes, mm -hmm. I would imagine. I like what you're saying about the paying attention to the weight for the OEM spec. Uh, that is a new line I have not heard yet. So that's very cool that you guys are cognizant of that. But I can see what Steve's showing here. So two different grill types for the dip, depending on the platform. What is the piece in the middle? I know that's the amplifier on the bottom. What is the two yeah. pieces in the middle and top? The, that's that's the brackets to mount the uh, amplifier above the factory radio. So, oh. so our our kits come with a three hundred point four, which is seventy five by four. Um, but our bracket also will support our bigger six hundred point four amplifier if you want more power, um, add more speakers, and maybe you have more speakers in your bag that that we don't even have or something. Um, so all that bracketry makes it super easy to mount the radio in a factory locations. The harness comes with it. Uh, it's a plug and play harness. The only thing that you're requires any sort of, um, I guess, custom wiring is hooking the ring terminals up to the battery. Uh, it's got, that's complicated. I'm not sure if everybody can handle that. Yes, it is very complicated. <laughs> uh, but we, we also have the, uh, the magic boxes built in. So it flattens the frequency response out of the radio. I was going to ask you that next. Okay. Very cool. That, yeah. So that's included in this kit, the, not and, an yeah. extra piece. Okay. Yeah. Included in the kit. So, uh, you don't need to flash the radio, but should you have, should you have flat had the radio flashed, you can cut the box out, you know, solder the wires together. You're good to go. Um, but it makes it makes everything super easy to get that flat response and tune your tune your sound exactly how you want it. And then of course the grills, the road guide, the street glide, and the tour pack grills come in every box. And, the, and the, I, I, I'm guessing those are little Memphis logos on the on the grill. Those are little Memphis logos. Very yes. Nice. Very yes. Nice. Thank you, Steve. Vanna White doing an excellent job today. Thank you, Steve. Excellent job. <laughs> Vanna White oh, never. They're, had... they're metal, by the way. They're not. Oh, black. they're metal. Very yeah. very nice. A uh, very are, clean look. You know what I mean? Like that looks like it's ready to fit. I noticed all the connectors are, you know, how gasketed, so weatherproof, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And you mentioned that the rating is IP. What on those speakers I, on the front? IPX6. IPX6. So that's more than enough. Yep. Very, very nice. And I can imagine they are mega loud. They are mega loud. Yes. Uh, very, we've, very loud. we've had a, a couple of our, our a really good customers that use a lot of our, not, the, not these speakers, just our regular pro audio stuff or our car stuff that they love. And they do all, you know, huge custom jobs. Like, well, I don't know if plug and play is gonna be what we want. And we're actually, some of those guys are our biggest customers now for these. So these, these, these work for the guy, even the guy that wants to go over the top, they're still loud enough to sound great for, for those guys. So, so Steve, I mean, you guys have a lot of bike customers. How do you feel about this kit? Uh, very good because uh, it fills in uh, an area that, uh, you know, good price point very good price point uh no flash required which is a big plus for uh, a lot of the smaller shops out there uh mm -hmm. we all know that the tools the required tools to flash those radios are can be quite expensive so mm -hmm. uh no it's a very pl plug and play installation so and, and it covers forward. the entire range that covers uh road 2014 ride, road and up yeah, Street yeah. Glide, Road Glide 2014, 2015. Oh, 2014. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you, it's easy to have this kit in stock and ready to go. Yeah. Of course. There's nothing ready else to that you need. Ready to install, no flash tool required. So, this is a great plus for, uh, for us. Yeah. So, so basically, well, all you need to do for this is what? Power or ground and ring terminals? Yep. That's it. And then uh, plug and play. Beautiful. <laughs> Excellent. Good job on that, uh, Team Memphis. I like that. Super clean kit. I love the bracketry. And the fact that there's branding on the bracketry, I think, is that extra little plus. So I wanted to give you props for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, let's talk about some technology. You know, we're, we're trying to round out this hour, give 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 the dealers listening a, a kind of a vibe for 
what the whole catalog represents, right? Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, selective voice coil technology. All right. Well, this is, uh, I'm a little bit biased, but I'll say that this is, uh, I'm going to say this is one of the biggest breakthroughs in subwoofers since bass, to be honest, because uh, what we have in now almost every sub 300 watts and up in a, in a short amount of time, every sub 300 watts and up, this will be part of the, of the lineup. When you see Steve holding up there, that's, that's the, the side of the, of the woofer where you select the, the impedance. So this is an MB sub. 500 watt RMS sub and it so you can select between two and four ohm so there's little jumpers in there that that sub set up currently for four ohm uh, if you want to switch it to two you pull that out there's two other jumpers it's very simple um, you just match up the colors the jumpers are color they've got a little flag you use two jumpers for two ohm one jumper for four you match up the colors and on the other side where the amplifier hooks up if you were to meter that you put it to two it's going to be 2.0 you put it to four, it's going to be 4.0. And if it's not, your meter's broken because my sub <laughs> is perfect. Um, uh, um, but uh, the way this the way this patented technology works is there's three voice coils in that sub. Uh, and at all times, all three voice coils are used in a system. So there are some other people that have had switches before. There's other people that use jumpers that, that'll take a dual four and make it two or eight ohm. And that's cool. Um, don't get me wrong, it's still very cool. But what we're doing is a three voice coil system that allows us to actually series in parallel in a system, those three voice coils to get from two to four ohm and our higher power buffers from one or two ohm. Um, it's, it, I love it. Well, unfortunately, I don't say unfortunately, this came out right at the start of COVID. So we could have had woofers with who knows what. Oh, people the bottom, you, you know, know what? Steve, Steve just made it clear for me, right? There. I was going to yeah. ask the question and he just did it before he even asked. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So, so, so hold on a second. So for those, I mean, obviously our, our listenership is uh, our dealers and, and shops, but you know, if there was a consumer watching this right now, say, well, why do I need this? Why do I need three voice calls? What What is the point of this? So from, from a consumer perspective, I mean, the way I got in this industry when I was 15 and a half years old is I had my first head unit speakers and sub before I had a first car. That's why I didn't get rear speakers because I didn't know what they were going to go in. Um, and uh, and so for, for those guys, I always wanted bigger, but I could only afford, but I wanted something now. So from a consumer perspective, you can get 112 and a bigger amplifier if you can't afford the, afford the second 12. Well, doesn't matter. You're never, you're always going to have the right sub in stock, you know, so or in, or in your car. So when you want to upgrade to the second 12, okay, you trade in your box, you get a dual 12 box, they rewire your first 12. And now your second 12 is wired correctly for the amplifier. You can easily keep adding on subs, no problem. Um, from a dealer perspective, it's fantastic because mm -hmm. I know I've been in this room strong enough. Oh, wait, do I need the dual four or the single? Four? Wait, which one do you have in stock? Oh, crap, I need the dual four. You only have single fours in stock. And of course, Never. the customer that comes in needs the one that you don't have. Exactly. Always. So with those woofers, you always have the right woofer in stock. So in addition to needing to stock less, you never have to worry about having the wrong woofer in stock. You can mm. always have the right impedance in stock because you just change it if it's wrong. Um, I, I can only imagine how that helps you, Steve. It does, of course. But, uh, you know, I've been on the other side of the fence too. And back in the days when exactly like Nick said, either or you don't have the right sub, the right uh, homage, the wrong amp. So you're not, you're not able to do a sale on the spot. So this technology allows everyone out there to make an install, a sale the same day, right? I don't know how many, but you, you mentioned what, what qualifies to have that feature on the sub in your lineup? Well, right now it's, it's most of the series of 300 watts and up. So you're going to get that in PR is 300 watts, MB 500 watts, um, M7 750 watts. Um, and then uh, our mojo, our big mojos at 1500 watts. Our VIV sub doesn't because it's it's a it's a dual to them. It's a one ohm sub. There's there's it's 2200 watts. So we don't need mm -hmm. to we don't you need don't, to make you don't need to play with that. Yeah, you know, it, it needs to be one ohm. It's only yeah. the only pins it needs to be. But that's a, that's a wide range. What I'm getting at is that's a wide range of um, of subs that have that feature. It's not just you know one line. Yeah, and some other people that have a switch have it, and they're it's a switch, so it can't handle as much power, and that's their lower. We try to make it our bread and butter is our PR and up for the powerful. So this the more ex you have to stock less of our more expensive stuff, which is probably bad for me because I sell less initially. But it becomes if you're going to have an expensive woofer, 
you know, a Memphis Wolver is a go-to because you always have the right one in and stock. And PR is like one level up from entry, is it not? Yeah, the PR PR is our bread and butter. It's the mm -hmm. it's got the big M on it. It's our loud and proud. It's been the our best-selling speaker subline since probably Memphis. We changed from Fultron to Memphis. So uh, honestly, it's the one that it's the iconic look of a if I can say that traditional Memphis-looking sub. Yeah, and Steve actually has a the uh, a PR clock, a PR sub clock that he can show you. Um, show me the is, clock. Show me this clock. I wanted so, I wanted to do a surprise. Oh, okay. Sorry. Is, listen, this thing is the coolest thing I've seen in a while as a as an audio fanatic. Let me tell you, and every shop needs that. It's pretty. So, that's pretty. Unique. Oh, I see what you did there. Look at that. But does it play? Oh no, it doesn't it play. Does, There's no voice calls in it. <laughs> There's no voice calls, but it looks. But it, it it really is. It as you can tell there, it's the real basket. It's the real everything else. Um, Look at yeah. that. I've never seen a subwoofer clock. That might be a first. Yeah, so I might be corrected, but I don't know. But I've never seen one. So that's that's the classic PR line. If you see that, it's got the black on black, the big Memphis M on it. Um, yep. Sweet, nice. So all sorry, right. to, sorry to steal your thunder, Steve. <laughs> can't, Steve can't always have all the fun. You, you got to give some to the president. Sometimes. All right. All yeah. right. Um, you touched on a word. I touched on a word. I want to get into it because this is probably. The one thing that I can't stop thinking about ever since I've seen it when you showed it to me back at Industry Week, the Mini Mojo line. Can uh, we talk yes. about the Mini Mojo line, please, sir? Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> this thing's, I'm a big dude. This thing's heavy. <laughs> Look at, oh my God. This, you know, when it's as, it's higher than it is wide. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, that's a six and a half Mini Mojo that Steve is holding there. That, the, that is, the the baddest pound for pound woofer you can get. I mean, it's a, that that woofer at six and a half is seven hundred RMS. Cool. The eight inch the eight inch version is nine hundred RMS. Um, to be honest with you, when we first started designing these, um, I, I was like, ah, we'll sell a few because they're oh they're so cute, you know. Um, and I I took the six and a half around to dealers down here, and they were like, oh, I gotta have one of those for my son's room, you know, like yeah, put that on the <laughs> counter, and then. Uh, that's what that's what my dealers were telling me and then then they they plugged one in and basically since they've launched we've been struggling to keep up with production um because they're incredible um like that that mb12 right there that that uh that steve has that is an awesome badass woofer but our mini mojo 8 will keep up with that 12 all day seriously um, yeah so actually when we first launched the mini mojos we had an mb12 all of our salesmen came in for a national sales meeting and they thought the MB12 was playing, but it was the Mini Mojo 8. We're like, nope. We pulled the we pulled the little the little block away. We're like, hey, that's an MB12. We're like, oh wow, that sounds awesome. And then like, oh wait, that's an eight. Um, that's a little guy. Yeah. So the uh, six and a half and eight, we have them in loaded enclosures that look they are sexy looking as well. They're super loud. Um, Steve, talk to us. I've, I've got to have to give Steve some time here because he loves this Mojo line. Steve, talk to us. Why do you think that's going to be a hot seller in Canada? Well, uniqueness. Uh, you know, cars of days. We don't have as much room as we had back in the day, right? So, so those little guys in the custom boxes that, uh, that Memphis offers fits underneath uh, pickup truck, uh, rear seat, uh, any smaller car. I mean. And this guy pounds. It, it's not just uh, looks. So. I mean, it looks like it pounds already before you even put any power to it. I can. It looks like it does. I can only imagine the excursion that cone has based on the design. Um, what kind of cubic uh, space do we need for 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 a six and a half like that? Um, if we're going ported, we're like uh, inch and a quarter on the six and a half, and you know maybe or an inch and a quarter, uh, one point two five feet, and a foot and a half on. Uh, on the eight, if you want ideal, um, they work in a little smaller, but that that's ideal. Um, so your box is similar to similar to a smaller power ten, but uh, for the eight inch, but with but it, but it handles seven hundred watts per. Yeah, seven hundred and nine hundred on the eight. Yeah, so All right. stupid, stupid loud and awesome. And what is what's the impedance on these guys? So those will eventually uh, get our. Selectable voice code, but right now they're dual two and dual four. Dual two and dual four. Yeah. That looks heavy to hold, Steve. 
It is. Let, yeah. let me tell you. It's a, it's a small, bulky guy. Is it heavier than the 12 next to it? I'm just curious, since you're there. It's, it's. I guess it's almost the same weight. Wow, that's crazy. This one, this one is a bit more heavy because of the basket. A bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess. No, it's, uh, it's heavy. <laughs> nice. All right, we got a little bit of time here. Um, do we want to talk a little bit about power sports, perhaps? Because that's another category that Memphis got some solutions for. Yeah, I think um, well, one one thing we're excited about with uh, getting getting on board with Automob is you know complementing their existing lineup. You know, the, so they already have an amazing lineup of product, and so they weren't going to add something that was just going to not fit well. So we fit in we fit in very well with the existing lines. I feel, and so um, one thing that you had mentioned at the beginning is we like to make our stuff look look really sexy in addition to sounding really sexy. So. Um, Steve has uh, has our uh, this is our our uh, sorry our MXA uh, BMB two and C two so these are uh, bar mount or uh, mirror mount speaker oh, systems they're like mini pods like yeah, mini cans mi okay yeah little mini cans so these are these are great on fairingless motorcycles and again it comes with black and chrome. Um, or also an entry level side by side kit. So for guys that don't have a lot of money, just want to add a little speaker. I mean, little little bit of sound to their side by side. These things work extremely well. I'm going to give you another compliment here. Packaging is on point, my friend. Like these are that's a nice box to have in the showroom. A little pile of those. It looks really. Are you going to unbox that for us, Steve? Can we see what that looks like? You want to? Okay. Yeah, of course we want. Unboxing's fun. Let's unbox this. What are we getting inside here? So we're getting all right. All right. For, Ooh, decal. Always. That's a bonus. Always, always. I always yeah, get the decal. sticker. Oh, nice foam. I like foam. Foam is so much better than cardboard. Foam keeps it nice and safe. Yes, yes, yes. We also tape it very nice. So, ooh. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's got like a matte finish to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mud black. Branded, of course, in the front on the grill. Nice. All well, waterproof, I can imagine. Yep. Weatherproof, I guess. And again, this comes with different mounting bracket. Okay. Yeah. yeah I see that. It comes with a bar mount or straight handlebar mount, which is on the on the speaker already. All right. right. And describe the sound of these guys, uh, Nick. Well, these are um, these are about 30, 30 watts is what their uh, what the amplifier built in has on them. Oh, these um, are powered. Yeah, yeah, there's a little amp. Oh, okay. There's another surprise in the box. Oh, bring it out. Little baby amplifier in there. Oh, so it comes with its own amplifier. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So amplifier and Bluetooth. So it's a full full system with uh, and the Bluetooth controller for play pause and everything has has uh, has bar mount as well. Dude, this would fit on my son's scooter. Yes. <laughs> I, I would I did, totally. I did put I did put one of these on. Uh, on my um on one of my buddy's kids power wheels and it was pretty awesome How, so, really yep of course you did good times yeah good times <laughs> <laughs> uh, again though um you know a solution product which i i'm starting to understand the theme here uh i don't believe automobile has anything like that in their lineup nor do as many other brands actually provide something like that uh a lot of solutions is what i'm seeing here steve indeed ben i mean Again, another unique product. Uh, very, it's a universal product, right? So I mean, yeah, that's again, you can put speakers anywhere, anywhere, anywhere you want. Memphis, you could put that ish anywhere. Yeah. I think that's a new slogan. That, that's kind of that's kind of our jam. I mean, we we try to our uh, you know we 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 try to focus on sales, right? And and the people that are selling, we listen to those people a lot because they're the ones in the trenches every day. So. We try to we try to we try to listen and get their feedback to try and get the best best product. And, and you know what's interesting is like you know way back when when you know let's call it ten years ago whatever when Memphis Audio was in Canada, you know the lineup was like arguably half of what I've seen here. Like there was none of this stuff. There was mostly just traditional audio. So it's like an all new offering altogether. So I think you're gonna find that you're gonna be connecting with a lot of new customers that may be discovering the brand for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh you know on that note i'm sorry before anything are we are we good with the products is there anything else that we want to show or well i have a surprise for you uh, and even the 
as far as the, the Harley Davidson, I just want to show the box. This box is beautiful. Yeah, let's do it. Let's show it. This is the Harley Davidson, uh, the Pro Four. So the the kid that comes. Oh, oh yeah, you should use the uh, front camera on this one. Oh really? Okay, sorry. But, oh, it's too big. Yeah, I see. Correct. So there we with, go. I mean. Oh my God! Look at that. Again, though, I mean, stack two, three, four, five of those in your showroom. You know what I mean? It's just, it's pretty. Exactly. And really it comes well with, uh, yeah, all the instructions, the pictures. <laughs> so you have an initial guide. I mean, they did a great job. Sorry for the noise. Here. All right. So they we want to stand. We want to stand out in every way, whether it's on the, uh, on the uh, sales floor or once you get it once you get installed we like to stand out that's our goal <laughs> and, and you know what all you know we're always talking about specs and stats and features and stuff like that but you know branding and marketing is very important to the retail side of things mm -hmm. and uh i think shops need to recognize that as well because you know when customer comes in and it's it's one thing for them to have seen something on a youtube video or you know maybe scope out the website but when they have it in front of them and you can show them that that makes all the difference yeah um, so that's what it is so let's see we covered Radio, we covered uh, sound bars, we covered a Harley kit, we covered uh, your selective voice coil feature, we covered your mini mojo lineup, we even covered, um, oh my, even look at the swag going on. Is that a stool? It's a stool. Goodness. That's amazing. Nick, you guys are killing it on the, <laughs> on the branding. I have to tell you that. Um, so, as you know, we've kind of incorporated dealers into these sessions because, you know, I think it's important that people hear what dealers have to say about everything that we talk about. We're talking about Memphis Car Audio today. Now, the challenge about this one in particular is that, you know, this is new, right? Like Memphis in, in Canada, brand new for the season. But we managed to find a dealer, a customer of automobilities, that has had past experience with the brand and is incredibly excited about the return. So I thought it'd be a good idea to reach out to said dealer and get him on. So maybe we can get some of his feedback and uh, find out what he's all about. What do you say? Sounds good. Okay, you guys good with that? So we're going to go on uh, to it? Red Deer. What, what's that? What's that, Steve? Oh, who is it? Oh, who is it? Ah, I'm going to tell you. So we're going to Red Deer, Alberta. Red Deer, and in Red Deer, there is a place who has built a lot of you know SEMA status cars. Like you see them on Instagram, crazy A-pillars, known for fab. Shops called Last Resort Fab owner and the dude is coming on with us today his name is bryce lewis let's go ahead and bring him on welcome to cma connected bryce hey, bryce. hey how's it going hey bryce thanks. thanks for taking the time bryce this is steve from automobility and mr nick lamonico from memphis hey guys uh hey, so bryce i gave a little bit of an intro why don't you uh share with our audience a little bit about who last resort fab is where you're at what you all about um last resort fab we're we're pretty new, actually. Last Resort originally started as a uh, YouTube tutorial channel to reach out to um, up-and-coming installers or guys wanting to get into fab to teach them some proper fundamentals. Um, but uh, mostly because I had returned uh, to use my college degree for work, so I was working for the oil field, so I, I had no conflicting... Uh, problems there. In the past, I had uh, employers reach out to me and say that I couldn't do certain tutorials because that's kind of my advantage and they're using that to their advantage. So uh, once I was out of the industry, sort of bird's eye view, then I started a YouTube channel to reach out and do some tutorial stuff. But uh, once I returned back to audio, I actually cut back on the videos because um, almost immediately I noticed that even uh, guys in my area uh, using some of those the backyarder guys using some kind of like tips and tricks to um, kind of disrupt the industry. So after hearing some feedback from professionals and stuff, they said, listen, we have, you know, if we want to go Brian Schmidt or do some courses. That's fine. But really all you're doing is you're teaching the backyarders how to make this stuff look nice. <laughs> <And> <laughs> so I kind of, I kind of cut back in the videos and then um, after COVID and, and having problem finding a good uh, permanent home, uh, I kind of bounced around from shop to shop a little bit. Uh, the girlfriend and I decided that it was time for us to to go on my own and finally do stuff for myself. Um, the first thing I did was um, the uh, GL audio truck uh, for Brian Graham there, um, which was extremely well received and kind of catapulted me to the next level. And um, that was the first one done under the last resort banner. And then, um, yeah, so now with the shop up and going, we've been open for about four months. 
it's been uh, it's been definitely a journey. Being a new business in, during the middle of COVID, it was definitely lots of lessons to learn about everything. So, um, but yeah, we we have a reputation. I have a reputation of of always finding a way to use engineering and 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 scientific measures to uh, design and build things to fit in places that people give up on or people say things can't fit, things won't work. We use a lot of um, polycarbonates, Lexon, we do high pressure castings, uh, we have a, a new laser. Um, I do a lot of work with carbon fiber, have been for 20 years. So um, that's definitely, we have a extra, uh, you know, extra little tool bag that we have that other guys don't. So we're able to do stuff that other people say is impossible or it's just too much work. And a lot of times it is too much work, but I, I don't say no. Um, that's always been my reputation. I always just do what needs to be done to make the customer happy and, and, and build it to a level that is built like OEM plus, you know, uh, factory hardware, machine screws, everything's bolted together, no two side tape, no sticking things on dashes, you know, everything's built in use factory mounting points and that's important to us. So. Amazing. So it sounds like we have found the mad scientist in Canada for the, for, for car audio fab. Um, so Bryce, well, you know, congratulations on the new shop. Uh, let's help us connect the dots here from, from what you just, the story that you just uh, said to us and, and Memphis. So, well, actually, you know, um, when we started as a new dealer um, and we were reaching out for brands and automobility was our, our, you know, a big choice for, for um, bringing on some products that we'd had used in the past, like Soundstream, which, um, you know, um, kind of, I guess lots of people think of it as B brand, but there are some good SKUs in there. You got to kind of pick and choose, but you know, it's definitely a brand that's helped us. Uh, we just finished a giant Soundstream building. It worked out well. And so Automobility provided us all that gear. And so when we were bringing in, I was talking to Scott and said, you know, man, I wish we could get a hold of Memphis. I wish we could get this up here. Like this line is just killing. I see all these American guys having all these, these skews that we don't get. And you know, the mo mini mojos, the eights and the six and a halfs and you know, Alberta, we're all country. We do a ton of trucks. So doing all these trucks, it's really important for us to have those skews that fit. And um, usually airspace is a problem. It's just physical dimension. Usually uh, nine inches is kind of the magic number. Anything bigger than nine inches doesn't fit in anything smaller will fit it's usually not airspace it's usually just physical size right um so and, and we've seen lots of top installers using the the uh, memphis line so I, I i spoke to scott and i said man we I, I wish i could get my hands on this i mean i we could sell the crap over if we could get it and, and sure enough a few few weeks later i heard the news that we were going to get it so yeah. well i think it's gone past that because i see some product behind you there so you already yeah. have some product in hand what's going on with that well, we've actually, um, uh, right as we were doing our opening order, um, I don't know if the audience is aware, but we are linked up with Alberta Boys Customs, which is uh, ABTV on the Wild Network. Um, so you can go on satellite or cable. You also view it on, I think, Amazon Prime coming up this summer. So we're part of that TV show, and we do their interior and audio. And... Um, um, we had a, a customer with a, a big budget and he's building a SEMA truck and he needs to uh, he needs to have some product for the vehicle, but he went over the top. He wanted bigger, better, badder. And, you know, in the world he is in the truck world, you know, uh, it's a dominate. You know, you see a lot, you see a lot of jail audio. You see some maybe um, some of the other brands. So we he wants something different. He wants to be different. So uh, I said, well, you know, look at this brand and and it, you know, it, it was crazy because it's, it's a giant build and it's the biggest budget that I've ever been part of. And I've been at, you know, shops in <laughs> Fort McMurray and stuff where we do lots of big builds, but this is the biggest one I've been part of. And it was a, a huge blessing to be part of because the customer is a super good customer. He's cr he likes our creative angles. And, and so we're doing this um, big build. We're actually doing two, maybe three of the uh, six, five, 14 inch, which, um, if you go online and you read the reviews, it's um, what I would call a SQL or a sound quality loud woofer. Um, it's, it's designed to, it has a very low FS, it has you know good sound quality principles, but it also is a 2200 watt minimum RMS. I think up to, some guys are running up to 3000 to them. Um, so you know, they're, uh, they're a big heavy woofer, 65 pounds or really close to it. Um, you know, beautiful woofer, cast basket. 
So to be part of, um, you know, we're putting a couple of those. I think it's over 15,000 watts RMS because we're doing a ton of mids in it. Uh, speakers in the box, um, using the Marine line from Memphis as well. So it's 100% Memphis build, top to bottom, interconnects, which I don't think you guys touched on yet, but the interconnect line from Memphis is amazing. Uh, you know, it's so funny that the industry, we've seen so many bad distribution blocks that cost so much money that to have an affordable distribution block that's compact and well thought out, it's something so simple as a couple screws and a piece of brass, but every other company seemed to muddle it up and the Memphis one is just perfect. The fuse holders are awesome. You know, the wire is beautiful. Um, well, what is the pot, what amplifiers and, and speakers are you putting in that truck before I get past it over to me? It's all, all six. So it's a full six, five build. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which just real quick, I want to pass that over to Nick. Quick comments here because I know you're tickled pink with what he's saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's insane. Uh, that uh, that's that's gonna that's gonna sound amazing because I I appreciate your comments on the on the VIV 14 because it really is a, a woofer redesigned to be loud and clean. So it's a 14 inch 2200 watt RMS sub that that plays flat from 20 to 500. I mean, if you were to if you were to throw that on, that was our design. It's got a seven and a half inch voice coil, the biggest voice coil. I don't know if it's ever, but by far the biggest voice coil that's being used in audio today. So you have a 2200 watt sub with a with a two layer voice coil when every other woofer close to that power has a four layer voice coil, which easier to get heat out with only two layers of wire. Um, so in addition to being stupid loud, that that truck's going to sound amazing. So that's. Uh, that's very exciting with the six five speakers, subs, and amps. That's going to be incredible. And, and I, can't, see, I can't wait. That seems like it was really good timing, Bryce, with the uh, automobility coming with the line. Now, I, I'd like to hear some feedback. Um, you know, have you had a chance to play with the stuff, the look and the feel, and all that? Like, just hear some feedback from a shop perspective. Well, um, we actually haven't fired them up where the customers are actually coming down to listen next week. So that'll be our chance to, to listen to the six five woofer. Uh, the six five mids, I have had a chance to play with. Um, you know, it is a, a flagship product. It, I've got one right here beside me. You know, it's a beautiful cast basket, um, very reminiscent of a certain French manufacturer, uh, very high quality, very well built. Um, you know, the, the crossover is all their own components. I got one of those two here. What, what do you mean by all their own components? Well, it's like each one has been re, like their own brand. It's not off the shelf components. You know, they've gone through and they've, they've obviously spent the time to handpick the components they didn't just have some manufacturer throw a crossover together you know they i'm sure they're on their manufacturing their partners work with them directly um one little thing like even the three-way six by nines in the pr line um you know most standalone tweeters that are in a three-way especially the small tweeter usually has a tiny little cap on it because it's barely playing any frequencies all maybe paying 6k or or less but there is actually a large cap on the back of the tweeter showing that the tweeters aren't afraid to play low. Um, this is the six, five tweeter, beautiful tweeter, a well machined. I have a, uh, a Dayton audio DAT V3, uh, you know, tool that allows us to do all the, the deal small parameters in house and, and confirm what the manufacturers are telling us is because, you know, there's a lot of lying in the industry, unfortunately, and lots of guys that say, Oh, my tweeter has an FS of, of 2000 Hertz, but it does not. And sometimes, allows us to uh, test the FS of each tweeter individually so that when we go and time align it, we know what we're dealing with because not all tweeters match. But um, th this tweeter on our Dayton audio uh, measured out at 1,488. Um, so it, its FS is 1,480. Uh, the other tweeter was 1,486 and this one was 1,488. So very, very close. You know, um, that low of an FS in a tweeter in a, it obviously shows that their engineering department knows what they're doing and that the quality of the product, it is a flagship product. Like the six, five line is a flagship product. I know a lot of brands have flagship lines and, and it's usually just, uh, you know, simple little things that are cosmetics on the front, but the back of the speaker is just a stamp basket or, or doesn't have the, the FS of the woofer, the tweeters stand out. Uh, little things like the six, five, six and a half has a binding post. And there's a lot of flagship, even, you know, you look at the, uh, again, the certain French manufacturer known for their mids, they still have push terminals on their high end speakers. And, and this is binding post, you know, that says something about what they, what they expect their speakers to look like on the install end, you know, it makes the install so much easier not to have that stupid piece of paper with a terminal and you break it off or it, it mm -hmm. gets wet and bends. And so a lot of details is what you're telling yeah. me, you, you know, yeah. uh, Steve, do you have any questions for Bryce? I learned a lot. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> right? It's cool having a yeah. retailer here. He totally gets a spin on of things. Of course. Uh, it's always good to have the feedback from the other side, you know, sometimes. You don't always have a chance, especially nowadays with everything going on, to get some feedback from the dealers. Yeah, directly. you know, our reps so, haven't been visiting the shops like they want to, unfortunately, right? But even it's, it's I, happen. at some point, I, I can't wait to get out there and, for example, meet mm-hmm. Bryce, see what a work he does. I mean, I'm, I'm an audio fanatic too, which way, why I'm here, right? So, I mean, uh, Steve, I'm hearing him. Full disclosure, Steve's in the middle of planning his Memphis build. I know. We <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bryce, any questions you may have for Nick while we got the president online with us? Uh, well, no, I mean, um, like I touched on, like, you know, the, the six, five line from the amplifiers to the mids and stuff, they, they, um, they're very grown up, you know, they install very clean. The amplifiers are beautiful, but the nice thing is, is that, um, you know, there's still lighting is, is still an option. You have selectable color. I know there's a lot of amp manufacturers out there that, missed that opportunity to put some RGB in an app because it makes it tie into the installs. If you guys have seen any of my work, everything ties together front to back. So I like to have that lighting everywhere. I'm known for my lighting and and having the apps with the lighting already set up and RGB already available to me is fantastic. But it also allows the app to, it looks clean. Like it does not look like a childish app with some color lights in it. It's a grown up, grown up app that also can be fun, you know? And I think that's important mm. is, is it's a, it's nice to have clean product, but it's nice to have a little fun. And uh, the six, five amps have these little afterburners, they call them, they're little, they cast a little bit of light to the side. And it's just a little touch that, you know, they could have just made it a, a solid lump of aluminum, but you know, they, they've had the foresight to, you know, have a little touch of class and, you know, it, it's nice to have an amp, amp line or any line that's, you know, fun and grown up, you know? Awesome. Uh, Bryce, any shout outs you want to give out before we let you go? No, uh, I, I, well, I just, a big part of it, like, you know, I, yes, I did open my own shop, but I couldn't have done it without my girlfriend. She's been awesome. Um, it's been a hard road. It's definitely a lot of late nights. I haven't had a day off in 110 days, so it's definitely a lot of work, but uh, it's it's coming. And yeah, I mean, uh, I guess a shout out to Alberta Voice Customs. If you guys haven't seen the ABTV, check it out. Um, great support of the industry. It's owned and operated by a former uh, lead singer of uh, the band Tattered. Uh, they were on the Warp Tour and everything. They were actually a very legitimate band. And um, so he's a musician at heart. And so music's a big part of his life. And mm-hmm. he's brought that into his show and, of course, with us. So I appreciate that he, a professional musician, and can see my installs and listen to my work and appreciate it. So perfect. Instagram means- and Facebook, right? Last Resort Fab? Yeah. Last Resort Fab on all socials. Yeah. Awesome, Check man. Yourself. I know we're going to see you back. We appreciate your feedback. I know Memphis does for sure and automobility yeah. as well. Thank you for taking the time today, Bryce. Good luck with Thank your you new so project. Much. And make sure Thanks. you circle back with us. We'd love to feature it as well. Of Once course. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. Thanks, right. Bryce. Take care, Bryce. Yeah. Thanks. Uh-huh. Got some feedback there. That that dude, that dude's heavy duty. Um, I'd like to hear what you have to say about what you heard there, Nick, before uh, we kind of round out this session. Well, it's, it's great to hear someone who appreciates the, all the stuff that we're putting into the product. I mean, and all the stuff he mentioned is all stuff that we took the time to, to research and, and talk to our customers. And all of us are audio nerds here. We all love tweaking. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if, and then we put that in the product, you know, so um, we kind of take everybody at Memphis and all of our dealers ideas and try to do as many of them as possible. So we try to put in wouldn't like, that's kind of the, the theme is, wouldn't it be cool if you say that all the time? We try to put as many of those in every single new SKU, every single, especially our flagship product. So um, it's it's nice to hear that even though we're just, especially this product is brand new for everybody, but very brand new for Canada here and get excited about that stuff. So. Yeah, and you know, Bryce doesn't come off as someone who hasn't played with a lot of different stuff. And for him to notice all those things, I, I can imagine could be satisfactory not only to you, but your team members who are listening in on this saying, "Wow, somebody noticed." Yeah, right? that, yeah. that stuff is important. Uh, exactly. Steve, how about you? What are you rounding out? What do you think of what uh, Bryce had to say? Well, if we scroll back to the start of this conversation and the beginning, I mean, the uniqueness of the product. At some point, uh, Bryce just brought up a lot of very key points. I mean, it, this is in the details. It's not only about the product itself, but you see the dedication that they have. And I mean, it's uh, as far as the POP, I mean, uh, the clock, I mean, it's all about fine details, which stand out to me when I was uh, looking into, you know, 
uh, into Memphis line in the first uh, in the first place. So absolutely. Well, you'll see. I threw up the digits. If you're interested in Memphis car audio products or audio products in Canada, make sure you Correct. connect with the the team over at Automob Automob.ca. Call Steve. Call his reps. Um, if you're in the industry, I'm sure you can find Automob. They're not hard to find. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Thank you very much for having me. I can't wait to have you back on when we talk about more Memphis toys. But congratulations on all the feedback we had from, from Bryce and everything we discussed. And uh, keep it going. I'm pretty excited to have you up here. Likewise. Thank you guys very much. Take care, Nick. Enjoy your, right. your holiday. Enjoy your Memorial Day. And go back <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go barbecue <laughs> now. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, man. Pretty cool. No, no, you can't go yet. Oh, Steve. I'm staying. Oh, I'm staying. It's me and you. Last last minute or two. Um, anything, any messaging that we want dealers to know about as far as inventory or like what, what's the deal with that right now? Listen, uh, we are supporting the full line of Memphis. So every single mm -hmm. product that is offered uh, and available right now, we have it. Uh, of course, again, this is a special year. 2021 uh, has not been different than 2020 as far as inventory uh, issues in some specific product. Uh, again, um it's gonna get better throughout the year throughout the months so but right now i mean we do carry the full lineup we we didn't want we didn't want to just carry specific product from you know automob is all in on memphis is what you're saying. correct and it's uh distributor's job to do so i mean it's our job in the end to support the line to get it you know recognition and to get uh Offer the dealers every single tool that they need to complete the sale, a crazy build like Bryce is doing. So, yeah. Awesome, man. Steve, yeah. you know you have to come on to all of these now, right? You're very good I, at it. I know. I know. Yeah, okay, perfect. Hey, en on. enjoy your Monday. I know you got a crazy weekend. Thanks for taking the time today. Thanks, man. Take care. And there you have it, a little automobility Memphis love today with a, with a nice appearance from Bryce Lewis over at Last Resort Fab. Make sure you check out his social uh, media, Last Resort Fab, you can find on Instagram and on Facebook. Shout out to Nick, Mr. LaMonica, who took the time out of his Memorial Day to join us. And uh, congratulations for his team for uh, all the design and everything else that's involved with putting out other products. Um, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in for this lunchtime learning session. We're back on Wednesday with a double whammy. We got uh, connected at noon for another lunchtime learning session, as well as CMA Live at night. We're talking DSP with some of the biggest heavy hitters in DSP tuning in the industry. I'm your host, Ben Wu for CMA Connected, presented by SiriusXM. Until next time, we connect. Mm -hmm.